am your host, Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews, back in here with yet one more video. Joined today by a very special guest, Sky. Hello. Say what up. <laughs> What's going on? Follow me on all social media outlets at Billy Nation. B I L L I, not Y. Billy Nation. Yep. Cool. <laughs> All right, um, so we have a fantastic video in store for you guys today. The YouTuber we're gonna be reacting to is Alexander Grace. I am not familiar with this person as a YouTuber. I got this suggestion from a subscriber. Mediocre tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Again, send all your video requests there. Ryan, thank you very much for the request. I see you. Uh, again, Alexander Grace, men are islands, women are boats. Um, initial thoughts on this was men being explored by women. Um, we're going to get into the video. We're going to watch a little bit more, respond to it, and hopefully you guys enjoy. Cool. So, so, sounds good. All right, without further ado, let's just get right in it. Many years ago, a community of men formed calling themselves pickup artists, and they would swap advice with each other on the best way to meet and date women. To begin with, their advice mainly consisted of tips and tricks that would be used to enhance your status in social situations. Say this line to her, play this game with her, begin to physically escalate at this point. At the time, it was something of a revolution because it empowered men to take control of their own dating lives. As time went on, the techniques they employed became more and more sophisticated and refined. But ultimately, it led to the discovery that if you really want to date a high quality woman, it's not about saying this line or acting in this particular way. It's not about any trick that you can employ. It's about fundamentally changing your life. Not so that you appear to be confident and successful, but so that you are confident and successful. This is why over time, the pickup scene has begun to look more and more like the self-improvement scene. The focus is now less on how to make women attracted to you, but how to become the best version of yourself, for which women being attracted to you is just the natural byproduct. Now, when you're a teenager, you are swimming in hormones and it's quite natural for you to spend all of your waking and a lot of your dreaming life as well thinking about women, thinking about sex. But as you get older and wiser and you accumulate more experiences, you realize that women cannot be the focus of your life. The main focus of your life should be yourself. While there are many reasons for this completely unrelated to women and dating, it is important that you understand that when you place women at the center of your world, they're not going to find that attractive. The more you chase, the more they run. Don't believe me? Maybe you'll believe this woman. Well, I've been with the same guy for a very long time, but we did actually break up and I had this other guy and um, and uh, he was, yeah, completely just head over heels for me and wouldn't even look at another girl and, but I just, it was, it was too much because he was just so overly clingy, overprotective, jealous, wouldn't let me go out and it was just a little ridiculous so I ended it with him. Uh, so it wasn't like attractive to you, it was like repelling? No, because you gotta let your, your partner be their own person still. Her story is not unique. This pattern repeats itself again and again, over and over throughout the world. Men continue to make the same mistake. A man likes a girl, and so he starts focusing more and more attention on her. He's thinking about her all the time. He wants to spend all his time with her. He wants to be closer to her. But the more he does that, the more she's repulsed by that behavior and less attracted to him. All right, look, uh, real quick, let's just pause the video for a quick second. I, I felt um, some expressions and some sighs that come from you. Um, do you agree with the premise of his argument in that it that the more that you become attractive and focus on the woman, the, the less that she will be attracted to you? Um, it's like hot and cold with me with that. Um, it's weird because I'm single and I would love for a guy to adore me and just be all about me, but it's almost like be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. So 
for me right now being single and wanting that male attention i'm like yeah i'm all for it pay only me attention be all about me but until i get that it might be overly too much where it's just kind of like it comes off a little bit controlling and abrasive where i'm just like uh i don't i don't want this much attention but it's just like isn't this what you said you wanted yeah so so how do you think dudes are supposed to understand like that that very fine line between um giving you attention and not giving you attention because it just seems confusing right like like you want something but then you're saying but it, once you get it you might be like eh. right so like like try to help me understand like how, how do we deal like as dudes how do we deal with knowing that kind of layer of confusion exists with <laughs> well i think just like anything um you just have to kind of like know what you're dealing with so I always recommend that people become friends first. Um, and sometimes it's kind of hard to cross those lines once you have established like a friendship with someone. Mm -hmm. So um, there's this guy that I kind of was really feeling a lot. And I'm like, oh, of course I want things to expand. But as I got to know him more, there were certain things about him that I just was like, ugh, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want this at all. And we are still able to become you know friends were still were able to like communicate and still have a friendly relationship but i think when you go gun home into a relationship there's no way of telling you know what's too much and what's not because it's all kind of like a mind game and i hate to say this and i i hate that this happens in dating but you just never know what you're getting into until you're already into it so i always recommend that people become friends first um so you get to know that person and when you kind of break down who they are as a person you kind of fill them out like this person's really indecisive or this person's really clingy and it kind of just molds you to know either how you're going to deal with them or if you even want to deal with them on that level at all so i mean there's no way to really get around the whole oh i'm i know i'm hot and i'm cold and you're supposed to understand this about me telling you have to be very vocal in um relationships this is becoming too much is there a way that we can work on this and it has to be a a way that you guys can communicate and the other person take in what's being said and not get mm -hmm. like offended like oh I i'm loving you too much oh this is a problem like no it's not a problem but it's making me uncomfortable so so i'm following you and i think it makes a lot of sense um here here's where my confusion is right because um you know if you think about you know the way that you describe that you know you're single now but you would love someone to be all about you right yes you would, <laughs> I think you would any love most girls you you would love someone being all about you yeah right mm -hmm. but then there's also a uh but what if you know so like if someone is trying to be all about you and you mm -hmm. and they're communicating to you that or you're communicating to them that you want someone to be all about you and then then he's all about you <laughs> at what point it's it's and all of a sudden you start to pull back and then he's like but that's what you wanted I, you wanted me to be all about you right so so regardless of like communication of what you want, I think the the difference and the confusion that happens to some dudes is that like what you say that you want may not be what you need. Yeah, that that's true. And unfortunately, there's no way to really like kind of pull back and know that instantly without for me, I'm going to go back to communication like it's okay women it's okay to be like yeah i didn't know what i want like and we don't always have to have it together like and that's the thing that most women come into relationships expecting us to have it all together we're like we're the most flawless person in the world we have trouble admitting our mistakes but it's okay to say hey you know i did want you to be all about me i want you to be all about me but the way you are coming about it is a little too much like is there a way that you can still be all about me and still kind of let me be my own person and mm -hmm. i let you be your own person and understanding those boundaries but if you can't respect each other's space because there's it's weird with women so we say yep. we want someone who's all about us we get that person who's all about us and they're like oh he's just too much about us and then once he starts pulling away we're like well what's going on what's new what's changed and we're like we're we say we're open to change but women aren't we're scared of change like mm -hmm crazy because yeah. we're used to routine things we're used to things being consistent with this particular person and once it changes it becomes a little bit too much on the relationship as a whole mm. where it's causing a lot of arguments and problems oh you used to do this i used to do that well when i did that you didn't appreciate it. it's not that i didn't appreciate it it's like we kind of contradict ourselves and that's just think 
That's men and women, but women more commonly. Uh, women exponentially <laughs> more. Let, let me try to introduce a, a, an idea to you. One, one of the things that, that you said is that women like consistency. Yes. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I think verbally you tell us that you like consistency. I think what actually happens is you much more prefer a bit of turmoil because at the point that the man starts to pull back, all of a sudden that's when you'll come like, well, what's wrong? What happened? <laughs> right? So it's like that ebb and flow between um, the turmoil, right? If, you, if, if you're not getting all the validation that you require, if you're not getting, right, but, but, but you rake him high on, on the market value, the relationship market value, sexual market value, however you want to call it, then that's when you could want it more you know just like you know your parents you, you got a bag of Doritos or cookies sitting on the on the uh, on the table and your parents are like no you can't have that and the more that you're looking at that bag of chips or Doritos what have it that you want the more that you want it because you cannot have it right, right. So like so there, there's a bit of human psychology in there as well it's like what once That's something true. is all, like readily attainable like once something is right here and you have everything that you need within that you start to um, discount the impact of the value that it has on your life. So then you just might disrespect what that relationship is. That's true. The, the excitement of before having something and then actually getting it and then losing it. And then that whole, you value things more when you can't have it. But then when you get it, it's kind of like, oh, I got it. So it's kind of like taking it for granted. And then once you lose it, you kind of like reflect like, God, I remember when I had that and I just totally ruined it. So mm -hmm. I definitely understand with that. But honestly, there's no way to like unconfuse a man or a woman about like putting in too much or putting in too less. You just have to hope that whatever communication mechanisms that you guys are using, it works for you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you guys know each other enough on like a friend level to know what's gonna make this person tick and what's gonna, you know, effectively work when mm -hmm. I communicate with them. So me having a normal conversation, it makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. We're not on that level. But me mm -hmm. having a conversation with someone I'm intimate in, it may put them in a space that's like totally different and it might cause more conflict. Yeah. So No, I, I get know. it. Yeah. Cause, cause, <laughs> cause, cause once emotions are kind of wrapped up to it. You know, you're not thinking logically, um, and then you know when feelings get wrapped up to it, it can kind of it can complicate a situation. Feelings will complicate everything. <laughs> Which is why I think, like as do as men, we should not be reliant on feelings. I think we should be reliant on logic. When there's no way that we can use logic, then you have to make a gut. You have to make a gut reaction, right? When when there's no um, justifiably clear answer, right? Like you start you're stuck out in the middle of the desert. You don't you don't have a map. You don't have, you can't look at the sky, you can't look at the stars, you can't look at the way the sun's setting, right? Then you just gotta make a gut decision. I you think know you know just I mean? have to consider all parties' feelings, and that's something that people don't do enough um, in relationships and friendships, in just any type of situation where you have to do what's best for you. Sometimes people don't consider the other person's feelings. They're doing what's best for them, they're saying what's on their mind, you know because this is what they feel works for them but they're not considering how it may fit, affect the other person so i think but, but listen but but if i consider your feelings mm -hmm. then i will consider that you say to me verbally that you want someone to adore you right to put you on a pedestal right but at the end of that that's not what actually keeps you attractive but i'm considering your feelings so it's almost like there has to be another layer that you have to walk within in order to get from point a to point b with your mind intact it's a <laughs> it's a struggle dating is a struggle getting to that that point where you guys are just like naturally yourself you understand this person totally can take years and mm. years and i think that's what people don't understand that those perfect relationships don't exist so those relationships you see on tv get that out your mind <laughs> like it's not real Facts. it's not real at all um for you to you go through things with people, you experience things with people, and that's how you get to really honestly know the true them. Because half the time, um, we were having a conversation earlier about knowing yourself, and half of the time, we don't know ourselves as people. We think we do, Swear. because we go out to eat and we're like, oh, I don't eat avocado because I don't like avocado. But <laughs> honestly, we don't know ourselves enough. 
a, a lot of us don't. You, you know why? Because it's we got so much information coming in from a variety of sources in this internet web 2.0 age that like we don't need to, right? Like, and I say need to like there's less of a focus on it, and it's and it shouldn't be. Like I think I think that we need to, right? But there's so much other information coming. You can focus on other people's lives. Uh, so we're only three minutes into this video. <laughs> let's get back in and let's, let's go. Let's, let's do in. it. <laughs> For any young guys listening to this, you need to pay special attention. Stop focusing so much on women. I know you want to go on dates. I know you want a girlfriend. I know you want to have sex, but that's why you need to stop focusing on women because they don't find that attractive. What I'm talking about is so important to understand. If you want to have women in your life, if you want to have relationships, if you want to have abundant sexual experiences, then for the moment, forget all the little seduction techniques, forget all the pickup artist stuff, Forget all the little tips and tricks. We need to talk about the big picture. What I'm talking about is a fundamental shift in the way that you see the world. You need to ignore what your hormones are telling you to do. They're telling you to put women as the center of your world, that you should be focusing on women. Ignore them. You should be the focus of your world. You need to be your own center of gravity. I don't remember when I first heard it, there was something like 10 years ago, but I wanna share the boat and island analogy because it's a fantastic way to understand how this world operates. You see, men are islands and women are boats. So what does this mean? Well, think of it this way. Every man lives alone on an island. He plants the trees that he likes. He builds the buildings that he wants. He spends his life shaping the island to be the perfect expression of his masculine creative energies and he's happy they're alone on his island. But women are not islands. They don't wanna spend time by themselves, isolated, building their own lives. That's why women are boats. What they do is they hop in their boat and they sail through the water, you know, ducking and weaving in between all of the islands, looking for one that looks enticing. If they see an island that they like, they'll dock their boat, they'll go on shore, and they'll live on the man's island for a little while. They'll try it out. If they like it, they'll stay. If they don't, they'll hop back on their boat and sail off again and try and find another island. What this means in the real world is that men are the ones who are creating the life that they want. You might find that one man's life is all about creating music, going on tour and expressing himself creatively. Another man's life is all centered around business, you know, building up his company, making lots of money. Another guy's a hippie. He's all about living in a van, smoking weed all day, traveling around the world like a nomad. Now, a woman will sail into this guy's life and she'll try that hippie lifestyle. She'll live in a van, she'll travel around with him. And what she's doing is she's testing it out to see how well it fits with her. It's important you understand the distinction between men and women in this case. Just real quick, I see you nodding your head over there. What, what, what do you feel about the, the boat island analogy? He's right. I mean, it's kind of like he's kind of woman bashing, but I mean, honestly, that's true. Um, there's some women, um, well, I'm going to say most women, who kind of come into a relationship expecting it to already be built. Um, we expect this man to have his stuff 100% together. You know, he has a job, he has a car, he has a home, you know, he has money to support his habits, plus mine. So we come in looking for these already built you know foundations mm -hmm. and so what he's saying here it, there's some truth to it we do we come in looking just to be another part of what he's already built mm -hmm. um and kind of just putting our little touches here and there on it um it's just crazy to hear like a man kind of observe women that way mm -hmm. you know like see how we kind of move and just test things and that's one thing i can say that make women and men a lot different like we do women test things if it doesn't work we get back on that boat mm -hmm. <laughs> and we go to the next island right. but with some men because they built their own island it's not as easy for them to just pick up go and just build a whole new island. Well, but but you were attracted to that island because he built it. Now, what if he then takes all the energy, all the time, all the effort that he took to build that island and then focus that on you? You might lose attraction for that island. Right, because you're not continuously building your island. You're for you to now, be a part of. Right. You're now focusing on me and I don't I don't want my own island. I <laughs> just want to no. live on yours. And that comes back to saying how people don't know themselves. Like you said in the video, you know, this 
island may explore creativity this one may be on a whole nomad situation i think it depends on what type of mood that person or that woman is in mm -hmm. at that time like we all go through these spontaneous adventures in life um as we grow uh, growing pains like they use the term um whole face <laughs> you know mm -hmm. women sometimes do go through that where they just want to be free they just want to hook up and be with who they want to be and there's some women who don't ever want to take that chance because there's so much other crazy stuff in the world so i just think it depends on where that woman stands in her life mm -hmm. um and her like knowing this is what i'm into right now it's real yeah all right you ready to get back in yep let's go let's go but you like the content so far? i like it uh, it's it's crazy it's crazy, <laughs> it's like crazy how almost true it is right let's not uh. <laughs> All right, let's get back in. Because she's not building her own life, she's just seeing how well she fits into his. If it's not a good long-term fit, then she's gonna break up with him, and maybe she'll go off with the musician man or the businessman. She's had enough living on Hippie Island. She wants to hop back on her boat and see what it's like on some other island. This dynamic is what comes naturally to both genders. They're complementary. Men are masculine. They're meant to be the leaders, the creators, the ones with the vision and dedication to achieving their life purpose in exactly the way that they foresee. Women are different, they have their own role, they're feminine and supportive. Deep inside herself, a woman knows that it's her feminine role to contribute her energy towards helping a man achieve his vision. So while she's sailing around the ocean on her boat, you know, navigating the dating market, she's looking at all of these islands and she's asking herself, which one of these islands would be the best one to live on? Which one of these men would I most like to contribute my energy towards? Which one of these men am I best suited towards helping with my feminine energy, my feminine contribution? So you see, when you understand that women are not islands, they're boats, then you can understand the mistake that so many men continue to make. Men are failing in their masculinity because they're not focused on themselves. They're not focused on creating an amazing island, creating an amazing life. Those kinds of men are on their own boats, and they're failing so miserably because their time is spent following around the female boats. But that's why women ignore them. Women aren't looking for a man with a boat. Women want a man with his own independent life. Women are looking for a man on an island. Now, it does happen. Occasionally, a woman does take pity on one of these men, and temporarily will allow him to hitch his boat to hers. But the relationship is doomed from the start because she's not going to be attracted to a man with a boat. He shouldn't be living on a boat. He should be living on an island. And eventually, she's going to feel the attachment between them as dead weight, as something that is slowing her down. And quite naturally, <laughs> she's going to cut it. Oh. <laughs> There's, you know what? The thing is, this would have been so relevant back in 2012, 2010 era. 2018, 19, these men are legit focusing on their islands. <laughs> They're not even letting people pull up on the boat, okay? They, they don't care. You can drive the boat all you want <laughs> but well, but i think it's content like this which is why they're focusing on their island yeah it, it it has to be because this makes sense well the 2000 <laughs> well, the 2012 2011 era that was where he started the video saying that was the pickup line era i mean you'd see all these videos on youtube of literally these pickup channel pickup channels where they just walk up <laughs> and just do all these different lines or what have you like that that was a lot of the content back then so a lot more dudes nowadays are focusing on their on their islands i think that a lot of men have built islands and watched their islands crash and burn because they're they're not exclusive islands and i think that there's too many boats crashing there there's it. yeah there's too many boats that he's allowing to people yeah. borders to get off on and he's yeah. not kind of making his island exclusive and i think that when a man has some sort of like exclusive exclusiveness about them they're just like so much more attractive like i you're not easily accessible and yeah i think that men wouldn't have these problems with these boater women mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if they weren't so accessible and um fast yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like i just That's need facts. 
you guys understand it's not bashing on men, but if you guys weren't making yourself available to every woman or every everything that just comes your way, you probably wouldn't have these type of problems with your island crashing and burning. Well, well, I think it's it's not that they're letting in all of these different boats, it's how they're letting them in, right? Like, like if we keep up with this island analogy, I think all dudes should have a seaport right at the end of the island, right? That's just like a <laughs> buffer between them and the island. Like you let them in only but so far. Right, and, and 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 you have security guards. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so but, you're playing kind of like. A, but a security guard might be your ability to judge. Right, you might need to heighten your judgment ability. Right, another one like your red flag indicator. You gotta heighten your red flag indicator when you see different things or her respond to a question. You're like, you know what? She might be someone who's gonna key a car in the future. Right, <laughs> you gotta let that one. You gotta set that boat off on. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, but to your point, I do think like a lot of the destruction of an island can oftentimes can be uh, come because you let too many of the wrong boats inland. You got to look at the boat, and I don't think that people are looking at what type of boat. Yeah. You know, we're so quick to be like, what type of car you know does she have, or what type of credit does she have, or you know, what type of friends does she keep around? Those things are important, and that is what makes that woman's boat. So, honestly and this boat could be on its last limb so, so <laughs> but i think like but, but dudes i mean let, let's face it the dudes on them islands man they like they like them hot red ducatis you see what i'm saying they like hot, hot nutty yeah listen they want those hot red ducatis the two seaters they want they want those those are, those are the baddies you know what i'm saying so but you know the thing is and, and and i've had experience like this in the past that like you know you'll have a 10 that that hot ducati who's insane crazy right but then you got like a sailboat you know what i mean like you know we'll, we'll get you to point a and b in a in dependable fashion you know what i'm saying not the fastest right but it'll get you there from point a to b you know what i mean um anyway uh cut one or two more minutes and then and then we'll we'll wrap up cool in loops so, so if, if you, you take, take nothing else, else from this video, video please, please internalize this message, message. When, when you, you are, are focusing, focusing on women, women you, you are, are pushing, pushing your, your energy, energy outwards and, and that, that energy is repelling women when you focus your energy inwards and you direct that energy towards yourself you know creating your own life creating your amazing island that energy attracts women so stop being a sidekick in your own story this is your life you are the main character once you've built your island built your life exactly the way that you want it women are going to start to arrive on their boats all of them desperate to live there permanently and then you'll be in the position to choose which one of them gets to stay if this is something that you feel like you struggle with how to have masculine focus in your life and how to make women attracted to you Book a one-on-one -on -one Skype session with me, and together we'll figure out how to improve things for you. This channel is dedicated towards helping men be their best versions of themselves and understanding women so that they can have successful relationships. Click the subscribe button so that you can access more videos just like this one. My man, I, I, I forget, what's his name again? Uh, Alexander Grace. Fantastic content, my young man. Yeah. Wow. Good content. <laughs> wow. So I think that just to pick back off of what he said, mm -hmm. um, it's it, men do need to focus on themselves, but women do too. And um, it's weird because we we do we put focus into men. Well, now that the roles have reversed, and now we have to do a little bit more work to get on the island. <laughs> we need to focus more on ourselves, and you know, thinking the quality of our boat. You know, just because it's nice and pretty doesn't mean it's gonna, you know, be a good investment. So, I mean. Well, I, I think, so what, what he's describing is male and female nature. I think no matter if, if it's the island or it's the boat, you both should be focusing on improving yourself. As you're focusing, you know, on developing yourself as a man or as a woman, you know, you may not be going out Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights or what have you, but it's like at key times in your life, you have to put yourself in a space in order to be chosen, right? Like out of sight, out of mind, right? Like, <laughs> like complete out of sight, complete out of mind, right? So you have to, you know, whether or not it's like, you know, joining, you know, some association in town or that's um, volunteering or what, what have you, right? Like, but you still got to make yourself relatively available, but just not time and energy and effort focusing on something that doesn't improve your island. Yeah, do what makes you happy. Um, but your happiness shouldn't be involved with making someone else happy. So make what, do what makes you happy, not what you think is gonna make someone else happy. Invest in yourself, 
be yourself. Um, I think you can't go wrong with just being naturally who you are. Unless you're crazy. All right, Sky. <laughs> Thanks for dropping Thanks by. Thanks for having me. That was, that was a fantastic. Thank you very much, Ryan, for that video suggestion. Um, We'll just wrap it up. Anything to say before we wrap up? I know you got social media. You want to shout that out again? Follow me. <laughs> That's all. B-I-L-L-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. Bill Nation. That's on Instagram, right? It's on Instagram, on Twitter, and um, on Snapchat. There we go. That was the other. <laughs> there it is. Listen, well, I appreciate you being, you know, because a lot of times when we get hit with, um, or I hit guests with uh, some of this content, you get varying levels of response and defensiveness towards some of the things that's happening. But I feel as though um, you attacked it very in an understanding type of a way. And yeah. I, and I think that that's a, it's a very unique um uh, attribute when you can look outside of that it might be talking about you like as a person but like trying to really understand is there any truth behind what that is there is a lot of truth and that's the thing when you find out who you are and you kind of can relate to like oh I've done that and then you can kind of like relate to the other person's feelings like I said sometimes you have to consider other people's feelings and how they may feel put yourself in their shoes that's and that's real. just something I do, like, to try to help me in my relationships. But this has been great. Good. I love this. Good. We got to do this again. Whole setup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. Do it again? We got to. All right, last question. Did you have fun? I had fun. Did you have fun? Hey. Are you looking at the viewers? <laughs> I know. I, I always Yeah. Have fun. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> Building my island over here. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Scott, thank you, much. Thank you very much for coming again. Thanks We're going to do another video if you got more time. Y'all already know what to do, all right? Mediocre tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Mr. Alexander, you get two ups. You get two thumbs up for me. You only get one thumb up? Oh, oh we got a woman bashing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So no. All right, until next time, you two. Bye.